that is Wayne Fillmore, and today we're going to be talking about something that some of you guys might know, or some of you guys might not know, but if you've seen these people out maybe downtown or in the public, and they're black, and they look Jewish, then you know exactly who I'm talking about. We're going to be talking about the five percenters, what they won't tell you they believe. So, the Five Percent Nation, or the Nation of Gods and Earths, or the Five Percenters, was founded in 1964 in Harlem of Manhattan, New York, by a former member of the Nation of Islam named Clarence 13X, born Clarence Edward Smith, and then he was later known as Allah the Father. So, Clarence 13X was a former student of Malcolm X. He left the Nation of Islam after a theological dispute with the nation's leaders over the nature and identity of God. Specifically, Clarence 13X denied that the nation's biracial founder, W. Far Muhammad, was Allah, and instead taught the black man was God. Members of the group called themselves Allah's Five Percenters. They teach that 10% of people on earth know the truth and are trying to keep 85% of the people on earth ignorant, while the other 5% are trying to enlighten the rest. Notice how they use the word enlighten, just like uh, the Gnostics used the word uh, enlighten for being uh, basically, uh, uh, what, what, what's the word I'm looking for? But you guys you got know what I'm talking about. All these different cults, they all use the word enlighten, and we got to enlighten you, and you don't really know the truth, and uh, there's always light and darkness, and Red and blue is like a uh, this word esoteric meaning. Uh, it's it's just really weird and crazy. But um, so for the people that <laughs> that they think teach that ten percent of people on Earth know the truth and they're trying to keep eighty five percent of the people on Earth ignorant. Uh, those ten percent would be wrong. Those eighty five percent of people, uh, most people don't believe in the Bible anyway. They would be wrong too. And the other 5% of the people who are trying to lighten the rest, they are wrong too. So everybody in this category is just wrong. <laughs> are black people gods? No. <laughs> God said this, I'm the Lord and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I rid thee, though thou hast not known me. Isaiah 45, 5. Were the Egyptians black? Hmm. The Egyptians were Egyptian. Egypt is a country inside of Africa because if you guys don't know, Africa is a continent. Were the slaves in the Bible from the book of Exodus black? Uh, no. They were Hebrew. They had dark skin, but they were not African. The Bible says this. These are the names of the sons of Israel who came to Egypt with Jacob, each with his household. Reuben, Simon, Levi, and Judah, Iskahar, Zublon, and Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtal, Gad, and Asher. All the descendants of Jacob were 70 persons. Jacob was already in Egypt. Then Joseph died, and all his brothers, and all that generation. But the people of Israel were fruitful and increased greatly. They multiplied and grew exceedingly strong. So that the land was filled with them. So the Bible clearly tells us how there were Hebrewites or Israelites in Egypt because Joseph was. I'm sorry, Jacob was. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, because Joseph was. I'm sorry about that. Because Joseph was. Now there arose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph. And he said to his people, Behold, the people of Israel are too many and too mighty for us. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, lest they multiply. And if war breaks out, they join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore, they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with heavy burdens. They built for Pharaoh store cities, Fitmom and Ramses. Oh, Fitmom and Ramses, the Pharaohs. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiply, and the more they spread abroad. So we see here that the Egyptians basically oppressed 
uh, the Hebrew lights and they turned them into slaves and they said, hey, if they go in and multiply and somehow we, they, they want to fight against us, all they, all they have to do is go to our enemies and they just outnumbered us. So they understood, uh, even back then, that the power of numbers is powerful. That's like, uh, just, just like if America tried to go up against China, we probably would lose because they have a lot more people than us. And China could just go and they could solve our enemies and boom. That's it. So that's why America always tries to, you know, have China wrapped around the finger. So, what happened next? Then the king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shephara, and the other Pua. When you serve as midwife to the Hebrew woman and see them on the birth stool, if it is a son, you shall kill him. But if it is a daughter, she shall live. And so, right here in the beginning of Exodus, we have the genealogy of Jacob right here. Uh, I'm sorry, we had the genealogy of Joseph right here. Joseph, if you guys don't know who Joseph was, Joseph, before the book of Exodus, he was the guy who uh, basically uh, was uh, the king of dreamers. That's what the, what the DreamWorks movie basically called him. Be. Joseph was a guy who was poor, brought up poor, and uh, his brother sold him out as a slave. And a couple years after he was sold out as a slave, God took care of him, and he was appointed like the uh, the second highest person up in Egypt. And, well, Joseph multiplied, and his kids multiplied, and in the book of uh, Exodus, we see that his kids multiplied so much that they outnumbered the Egyptians. And the Egyptians, they, uh, they saw that that was bad, and... The, Egypt, the Pharaoh of that time, he didn't know Joseph. He didn't know the God of Joseph. And so, basically, he oppressed uh, the Hebrewites. So, we see from the beginning, there were Egyptians in the land of Egypt, of course. And there were Hebrewites. But there were not any, uh, any, uh, any, any, any pure blood Nigerian Africans that we see, uh, you know, that, that we are. Uh... You know the 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 pharaoh or whatever. He, sure, he was he was black, but um, <laughs> like I said before, Egyptians are Egyptian. The Hebrewites are Hebrew. They are not African American of any kind of what we think today. And if you go over there to Africa and you try to claim any of the Africans, if you're black, um, they probably won't claim you anyway. They don't claim us. So. Was Jesus Christ black? Uh, I say no. No, Jesus Christ was not black. That's not what the Bible teaches. And I'm going to show you a video why. Usual traits can become permanent with inbreeding. And that might have happened with the Tower of Babel. Genesis 10 says, These were the nations were divided after the flood. Not only the languages, the nations were divided. There's a great book on this topic by Bill Cooper. Uh, i got one here. It's in the library. After the Flood. Bill Cooper. Incredible book, if you want to read that, about the dispersion of the sons of Noah. What happened? Well, Japheth, one of the three sons, had about 14 kids and grandkids. It's a little difficult to count, believe it or not. You read Genesis 10 and see if you can count it. Try to do better than that. Okay? It's hard to tell who goes with who. But by my count, 14 kids and grandkids for Japheth. Ham had 31 kids and grandkids. One of them was Canaan. Now, if the curse was on Canaan, we got a problem. Because the Bible tells us Egypt is the land of Ham. Psalm 105, Psalm 106, Egypt is the land of Ham. The children of Ham migrated to Egypt. Africa was actually settled by the descendants of Ham. Black people apparently came from Ham. Japheth is the father of the Europeans, and Shem is the father of the Orientals, which includes Jesus Christ. They're considered actually Oriental, the Middle East. Okay, Okay, guys, if you saw that video, here is a picture of what well, Jesus Christ. Or a lot of people think that's Jesus Christ, but the guy on the left, his name is Caesar Borgia, and he was portrayed as Jesus Christ by Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci was uh, Caesar Borgia's gay lover. And he painted Caesar Borgia as Christ, and he started portraying him as Christ. And the image got so famous, every time somebody sees a white guy with long hair, uh, they automatically picture Jesus. But Jesus 
was not white. Jesus was Middle Eastern. So, basically, right here, if you look up at the top, um, this is actually a genealogy of Jesus Christ. And hold on for a minute. I'm going to fix this for you guys just so you guys can see. Here we go. So, this is the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers. And the, these are the names of the sons of Israel who came to Egypt with Jacob, each with his household. And if you guys don't know, David, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Judah, they were all Middle Eastern. And, well, Jesus Christ was not black. Jesus Christ was not white. Jesus Christ is actually Middle Eastern descent. Sure, he had dark skin. But it wasn't because he was African. Jesus Christ, the Bible even says that he was a Nazarene. If you read your Bibles, you will know that Jesus grew up in the city of Nazareth. He was born in Bethlehem and his parents fled to Egypt when uh, one of the crazy kings was trying to kill Jesus as a baby. Just like we saw in Exodus. And so Jesus Christ is Middle Eastern and black people are not God the only God there ever is the only God there ever was the only God there ever will be who is the same yesterday today and forever is the God who died on a cross for the sins of you and I Jesus Christ the King of the Jews so, if you know a friend who is uh, a five percenter, or if you know somebody who is a black Hebrew Israelite, those are people who you probably see uh, in the downtown section of your city who uh, dress up in Jewish clothing, and they're black, and they claim to be Israelite or Jewish. Uh, show them this video, and show them that they're wrong, and black people are black, and Hebrewites are Hebrewite. Uh, even to take this even further, uh, you know, those people think that they're the children of God. And the Bible says that uh, we aren't God's children by our own works or even by our flesh and blood. But through Jesus Christ, God gave us the right to be called children of God. Uh, a, great, a great quote by uh, Spurgeon. I'm sorry, not by Spurgeon. If it, uh, it's either by Spurgeon or it is by the guy who made the Chronicles of Narnia. And can't really think of his name right now, but you guys can look it up. But uh, one of the best quotes from Hum is, uh, The Son of God died so that men could be the sons of God. We aren't the sons of God. We aren't the children of God from our bloodline. No. Because uh, our bloodline comes from the bloodline of Adam. But we are uh, sons and daughters of God through faith in Jesus Christ by what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross because we are sinners who need a savior i hope you guys like this video like share subscribe comment and if you guys want to uh, just hear about some more interesting topics or whatever uh, or if you guys just uh have some questions that uh you just want to ask me or if you guys just uh have a subject that you think i should take on the channel you guys can email me at the email address below and if you guys want to donate or if you guys just feel that our God is tugging your heart to just give to the ministry. Give whatever you can. There is no uh, <laughs> amount that you can exceed and no amount is actually too low. Uh, you, can, you can click the link right below. And if that link doesn't work, I'll put a link for you guys in the description box below. Uh, once again, I hope you guys liked this video. Last year, like, share, subscribe, comment. And until next time, good luck and good night.